Hi everybody, my name is Kira McCallion. I'm a chartered physiotherapist. Uh, I work with Athletics Ireland uh, for the last probably seven or eight years. I'm also a runner myself and today I'm going to talk to you about mobility for runners and some tips to improve recovery from running. Okay, so mobility for runners, it's quite a buzzword. What does mobility actually mean? Well, in its simplest terms, it just means being able to move freely. There are kind of two parts to mobility. So muscle flexibility, which just means the amount of extensibility in a muscle or how much it can lengthen. And the other part of it is joint movement. So the range through which a joint can move in different directions. So why is mobility important? Why is it a buzzword? Well, running is a full body activity that requires synchronous movement of multiple joints. Therefore, it's important that each joint can move through the range of movement that is required from it for the overall movement that is running. It's also important that this can be done comfortably, so within that bandwidth that it has, and repetitively. So running is a cyclical activity. We take quite a lot of steps, even in a short run. So joints need to be able to move through a range of movement comfortably and repetitively throughout your run. So if we delve into mobility for runners a little bit more, and we were to focus on three areas where you need adequate mobility, I would say the most important areas to focus on are the foot and the ankle, the hip, and your mid back or thoracic spine. Of course, it's important that you have adequate mobility at all joints. So even the, obviously the knee, your lower back, lumbar spine, and your shoulder and upper body are also important. But if we were to start from zero and pick three, we'd focus on the foot and ankle, hip, and the middle part of your back. So how do we achieve optimum mobility? Most people are most familiar with stretching. And stretching can be dynamic, so you're moving into a range for three or four seconds, moving back out and doing this repetitively, or passive stretching is the modality that most people would be familiar with, where you're holding a stretch of a single muscle or muscle group for a reasonable length of time of 30 seconds. So stretching is one way that we can increase mobility, but there are other ways like joint mobilizations or dynamic movements that can also help to increase or improve your mobility. Um, and usually trying to include a combination of all of these would probably be the best way to improve your mobility. This is Athletics Ireland Mobility Programme that has been designed with a physiotherapist from Sport Ireland Institute. It is available uh, free to download on athleticsireland.ie. I've put the link up there uh, if you want to have a look at that. Um, it again focuses on the ankle, the hip, and the thoracic spine or the mid back. It incorporates a combination of active stretches like we spoke about, um, where you're holding the movement for three or four seconds and repeating it between five and 10 times, depending on the exercise. But it also includes dynamic mobilizations, particularly of the spine. Um, but again, focusing on those three key areas where you're moving into a range that you're comfortable with, moving back out and repeating that to increase mobility at joints and also at soft tissue and muscles. If we look at this in a little bit more detail, um, you can see on this first one here, we're looking at a knee to wall, which is working on increasing ankle dorsiflexion of that front leg. The next thing uh, is looking at increasing extensibility through calf, hamstring and lower back, which is an inchworm. I should say here, each thing or each exercise within um, this program describes the aim uh, and how to do it, how much to do and how long to hold for, how many repetitions. And obviously has a, has a picture here. So they should be relatively easy to follow. If we go back uh, to so that third one there, we're looking at, I suppose, something that people are more, a little bit more familiar with, so a hamstring stretch. But this program gives a couple of variations. So you can try a straight knee hamstring stretch or a bent knee. I would, if you haven't done any of these before, I'd encourage you to try both and see what you feel works best for you. And you can stick with that. Similarly with your quads and hip flexor stretch, there are a couple of variations here. Uh, a little bit more, uh, focused around hips, particularly around the groin here, that adductor stretch. 
And then we move on to some mobilizations. So again, aimed a little bit more at that spine and hip. So um, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, and then again, coming back into that, into that hip range. Um, what I really like about this program is that it has included that little bit of a link between the lower body, which most people uh, would, would stretch for running, but also that mid back, that trunk, and that shoulder joint. So these last two particularly encompass a little bit of, of both of those together, which is really important. So we've talked a little bit about what mobility is there, um, but one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is mobility enough in itself? Um, moving in an optimal way can theoretically help to prevent injury, but, you have to remember that you need to be able to control the range of movement that you have. And this control can vary due to different things. So your control of movement and control of range can vary at different velocities. So you may be well able to control a movement um, or to control your range of, of joint movement at a slow pace, for example, a slow jog, but that might change if you were to run quickly or do a movement quickly. Fatigue is one of the other things that can affect your control of, of movement. Um, so you might notice at the start of a run, your control in terms of your stride and things like that is really good. Whereas at the end of a run, when you start to become a little bit fatigued, you might find it a little bit more difficult to control. So therefore mobility for me is really important, but it's not the only thing that is important in isolation. If you're new to running and taking or taking up running for for the first time in quite a while after being a little bit inactive and you're not doing anything else, I think mobility program is really important. If you're someone who's already doing a bit of mobility, I would probably suggest that you include a little bit of strength or control work with it. So for me, a mobility program by itself may not be enough to prevent injuries, but it's a really good starting point, especially if you aren't doing anything else. And again, if you have a more holistic program where you include some mobility as well as some what we would consider more like strengthening exercises, but you, they can also be considered dynamic movements like squats or lunges, calf raises, RDLs, those kind of things. Um, then it becomes a little bit more comprehensive in terms of a way of trying to prevent injury. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about how to physically prepare for a run and how to recover from your run. So for me, before a run, there are two key things that you need to do. I personally don't mind what order you do them in, and that might depend on where you're running from, um, what facilities you have, um, that kind of thing, or what you prefer. Um, but I think both need to be included before a run, even if it's just a slow jog or a walk to run program. So the first thing you need to include a pre-run routine. Um, so I'm calling it that because again, I think mobility can be part of that um, and should be part of that. So doing your stretches, your dynamic stretches, dynamic movements is really important here to get your joints and your muscles moving ready for the, the exercise you're going to undertake. But I also think it would be useful to include some um, some more challenging exercises like lunges or calf raise walks again to get the muscles going a little bit um, so that's the first thing and then the second thing i think that must be included as part of a warm-up is an easier aerobic activity building you up ready for your run so that can be an easy walk or a jog gradually building up the pace you only need to do about five or ten minutes of this uh, and again which whether you choose to walk or jog depends on what your actual run is going to look like if you're starting running for the first time maybe an easy walk for five minutes would be enough if you're someone who's well seasoned a well seasoned runner um, and you're doing you're used to doing really long runs just a nice easy aerobic jog to build into your run would be sufficient um, and the, the reason for doing this is to increase your heart rate and your respiratory rate gradually so that it prepares you to get the most out of your run. So they're the two most important things to do before a run. What about after a run? So there are a couple of ways, a couple of simple things that you can do to help you physically recover from a run. 
So immediately afterwards, a cool down is really important. So similar to your warm up, the cool down just needs to be either a slow jog or a walk to gradually bring your heart rate and respiratory rate down back towards your resting levels. So it's to help you start that recovery process. After that, some gentle stretching of the muscles that you have used during your run, like your glutes, quads, hamstrings and calves would be really good to include. And although I'm not a nutritionist or a dietitian, I think we have to, if we're talking about recovery, we have to touch on nutrition. Um, I believe Evan is going to do a little bit more on this in more detail um, on another webinar. Um, so nutrition, getting some fluids on board, so replacing any fluids lost from when you're running is really important. And fueling right after your training is really important. So getting those carbohydrates and calories in at the optimum time is really important to help you recover well. They're the most important things to do straight after a run. What about later on that day um, or later on that evening or on the days in between your run? Well, for me, if you feel particularly sore or tight in an area, um, some gentle stretching or general overall exercise can help. If you're starting running for the first time or you are returning to running after a period of inactivity, experience DOMS, so that's delayed onset muscle soreness. All that means is that your body is not used to the exercise you're doing and it's reacting a little bit. What happens is the more often you expose yourself to this exercise, the less you will experience that. So actually some gentle exercise can help but more than rest can. Okay. So we've spoken a little bit about recovery. Another buzzword um, within the running community would be this term of active recovery. What does that actually mean? Well, all it means is light aerobic activity. And actually what we spoke about, your cool down uh, is a form of active recovery. So all it is is an easier aerobic activity than what you are doing as part of your running or your training. And it can help you recover between runs. So if you, for example, had a run on a Tuesday, a rest day on a Wednesday and a run on a Thursday, doing some active recovery on that rest day, something like a really easy walk or cycle, some swimming or even some yoga on the days between running would be a form of active recovery and can actually help you to recover between runs and get the most out of your running. Um, I couldn't have a webinar uh, talking about running without talking about injury prevention. So I wanted to focus on why we want to prevent injuries from a runner's point of view. Well, you as a runner want to enjoy your running for as long as you can. And an injury will stop you doing this. So in order to get the most out of your runs, you want to be injury free to be able to enjoy your running. It's important to be injury free to get that consistency as well. So you're not missing runs or missing sessions that in turn um, will lead to improvement and improvements in performance. So you'll be able to achieve your running goals if you're injury free. It'll be a lot easier to do this. So that said, what can we do to prevent injuries for ourselves? One of the most important things is to balance your running with your recovery. So that's where we need to schedule in rest days or easier running days um, and listen to your body. We've spoken about optimizing recovery. So we've touched on nutrition and how important that is in helping you to recover from your training. But sleep is also important as well. So studies have shown that athletes who sleep less than eight hours a day are at an increased risk of injury compared to athletes who sleep more than eight hours a day. So one of the most simple things you can do to help you recover better from your training and to help prevent injuries is to just get a little bit more sleep if you're under that eight hours. We've also touched on your strength training and your mobility work. So again, for me, a combination of both of those is really important to help prevent injuries and to keep you running and keep enjoying the sport. And finally then, I will leave you with a few of my tips for preventing injuries, particularly for new runners, but this is applicable to runners of all ages, of all levels, of all abilities. Um, 
no matter where you are in your running journey. So the first thing is to build up your running slowly and gradually. If you go from doing absolutely no running at all to running five kilometers a day every day, it's a recipe for a disaster. So trying to, yes, have your aim, but build up to that slowly. Take your time with it. Rome wasn't built in a day. And if you build up gradually, you'll be more likely to get there and to stay injury free. So this leads us on to making sure you include rest days in your program. They are really important for helping you and your body to adapt to the stimulus that you're, the exercise stimulus you're putting it under. So you're running. Um, and that adaptation is what leads you to make those improvements and to improve your performance and to achieve those goals. The other thing I would get you to think about is to try and be as consistent as possible with your running itself. So getting your running done on the days that you are due to, but also your preparation for running. So making that warm up a part of your running routine and to make your recovery and that cool down part of your running routine. And that is where planning can come in. So it, we all have really busy lives, uh, particularly at the moment. I'm sure a lot of people are trying to work from home and homeschool children, while also maybe taking up running for the first time or trying to do a little bit more exercise in January this year. Being prepared. Um, so if you know what time you're going out for your run, have that in your diary. And then make sure you have your water or your drink ready for when you come in. Make sure you have enough food in the fridge so that you can actually uh, eat a, a reasonably good meal uh, as soon after you're running as, as possible. Um, the other really simple tip or trick would be to keep a running log or a training diary. So it's one thing to have um, your running plan, but if you have a record of what you actually do, and how you felt during it or afterwards, that's a really useful way for you to look back over the, the past couple of weeks, see how far you've come and to see how you're doing overall. And the other really simple thing is to listen to your body. So your body is really good at telling you how it's reacting to things. So if you feel particularly tired, whether it's running related or life related, or whether you feel a little bit, a little bit sore or stiff in a particular area, listen to that, hone in on it. If you can do something about it yourself, so if, it's, if, if you're just feeling a little bit fatigued, pull back a little bit um, on your training for a couple of days and see if that makes a difference. If you're feeling a particular tightness in an area, try and focus on that a little bit with your stretching or foam rolling or something like that. But if there's something that's persisting, whether it's a pain or a tightness or something, seek advice from a qualified physiotherapist if you need it. You're normally better off doing that early and hopefully finding out there isn't anything majorly wrong rather than trying to push through your running um, and end up having to see a physiotherapist where you might need a little bit of a layoff. So seek advice from someone who knows what they're talking about early if you are having any issues. And I'll, lastly, I'll leave you with a couple of resources. So there are loads of things um, on the Athletics Ireland website and the Sport Ireland website in terms, of, um, in terms of running, in terms of those mobility things. There are some injury prevention documents, uh, some foot strengthening exercises. There's loads of stuff up there. So if you are new to running, um, or as I say, returning to running, have a look at some of those. Uh, you know, they'll definitely be useful for you.